Hey guys, Tommy here in Buena Vista, Colorado with our 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Now this is a behind the scenes video to show you our camp setup as we prepare for another day out on the trail for our no pavement needed series where we are bringing you some of the most beautiful passes throughout the wonderful state of Colorado. And we are currently setting up camp here at the Buena Vista KOA because we are living large. Well, to be honest, we have the F-250 with us and Andre really wants water. So <laughs> we've got the water set up for the F-250, but here on the Gladiator, we have the roof nest. And in this video, I kind of want to show you just how the vehicle is done on a little road trip out here, a couple hours away from Boulder, and also talk about what it's like to camp in the Jeep Gladiator. Now, this is our project truck. It's a 2020. We partnered with Mopar and Warren and BFG for the build of this vehicle. So it's got a two inch lift. It's got full Mopar parts, which means it's got the complete warranty. In the front, we've got our winch with the uh, light set up. And the nice thing about this light setup here is we've got the pods on the front, the pods on the A-pillar, and that is all controlled via the auxiliary switches we had installed over at Johnson's Auto Plaza. Now the snorkel here, it's probably the uh, least useful thing on the Jeep, but I really wanted it because it looks cool. And you're probably gonna disagree, but I think it looks really cool. The whole goal of this build was to be very purposeful. So apart from the snorkel, everything on this Jeep has a purpose. Everything on this Jeep is used, including the steel wheels. Steel wheels are great on the trail because if you bend them, you can bang them back into shape with a hammer. Well, I can't because I have the upper body strength of a limp squirrel, but <laughs> someone uh, with a moderate amount of upper body strength could salvage a wheel if you were to bend it on the trail. Fox shocks. Now that's the Jeep. You've probably seen this, this vehicle in some of our other uh, videos, but let me show you the camping setup because this is the part I'm currently really excited about. Now, of course, the Gladiator is a pickup truck and in order to mount a tent, a rooftop tent to our pickup truck, we partnered with this company called Rack Stars. This is a company out of Boulder, Colorado. They make these uh, racks here in the United States and they are super heavy duty. So unlike most pickup racks where you'll have two crossbars the rack star system has three and then it has these molly panels that keep it all nice and taut so this thing is going nowhere and this is a huge deal especially when you're out on the trail you don't want a lot of flex you don't want whatever you have on top of the rack to uh potentially either damage the rack itself or fall off so this is a super robust system and the way it works is it ties in here into the factory bed rails i added these on these are the mopar rails you can see it's bolted in there the three cross members and then the Rackstar Molly panel is also um, uh, ready to take accessories so max tracks or in this case we have uh, additional containers for water and gasoline mounted on the side of the Molly panels now in the bed this is the decked system this is a drawer organization system for the rear of your Gladiator or your other mid-size pickup truck you can see I've got my recovery bags and my air down tools and my air compressor in this left one and then in the right one I just have a set of recovery boards just in case we get beached and then of course you do have some additional room above the deck system before you hit the uh, tents so you could store some other stuff on there too if you had larger items now let's talk about this tent this is the roof nest condor and this is a really premium tent. I'm really impressed with the size of this tent. Now, uh, in the last video, my dad and I shared a tent, but we shared the Roof Nest Sparrow, which is down there on our Silverado. And that's the one that pops up. The Condor is more of a two-piece fold system. So you've got a hard shell that folds back, and then the whole bottom portion of the tent folds like this. And then, of course, it's supported here on one side by the uh, ladder. And then, of course, it's also melted, mounted securely to the rack star is a rack but the cool thing about the condor is it's extremely large i'm still setting it up here so i haven't quite got my sleeping bags in position but this is more of like a two and a half or three person tent so three smaller people or two larger people that want some additional um comfort this is perfect for nice soft padding we have one of the windows open unfortunately you can see here the window is secured via these rods but the way we have it mounted that rod would hit the uh, back of the cab. So I have to figure out a new solution for that. Always tinkering out here, but I think this is gonna be nice and warm tonight. You can see it's insulated as well. So this should be the way to do it. I'm really stoked about this. Uh, it's gonna be a great night's sleep. And the advantage of having 
a tent like this is you don't have to pull a big camper around when you're out on the trail. You don't have to deal with additional weight of a bed mounted camper like Andre. Uh, even though those are comfortable and they're much smaller than a, a trailer, which is great for when you're off road, they're still pretty heavy and there's not a lot of bed mounted camper options, at least I have found for the Gladiator. So this is a light compact solution. I can fold it up into just a small box that lives on the top of the, the Jeep. It's hard shell. And I can drive this Jeep around every day, not worried about it, not worried about someone breaking into it or something. It's a nice, convenient solution. And I'm impressed with the quality. We've had a few of these. We've had Yakimas and Easy Ons, and I think the roofness has been the best so far. Certainly the most comfortable, and this one is definitely one of the largest. Anyway, so there you have it. Quick little walk around of our, our Jeep Gladiator build. Tomorrow we are going to run, I think, Tin Cup Pass, which is one of the most scenic passes in the state. We have the Rubicon here. We've got the Silverado Trail Boss down there. Andre is somewhere out in the boonies in his F-250 baby. And then, of course, I'll be in the Gladiator. In terms of overall interior space, plenty in terms of backseat room. So we have all of our camera gear, computers, all that lives back here in the rear seat. It all got kind of jumbled around when I threw together camp. But the front seat is kind of where I have a space issues. I've talked about this in previous videos, but the driver's seat just does not go back far enough for me at six foot one inch tall. So it's hard to get comfortable and the seats just don't have enough lumbar support for my liking. This is the biggest issue I have with the Jeep, but if you can kind of get past that, which is granted a big thing to get past, Plenty of headroom here, so headroom is definitely not an issue. Good visibility too, so unlike the Silverado, which is a little bit closed off on the inside, a very high sills, the Gladiator, big windows, flat windows as well, easy to see the world. The Uconnect system is great. 8.4 inch Uconnect system. We've been uh, pairing our phone with the system too, so we can play our music as we cruise down the road. Of course, uh, AM, FM, XM capability, heated steering wheel. This is a loaded truck. It's, a, it's an expensive truck though, $55,000. And fuel economy, it says 16. It's a little better than that. I haven't recalibrated for the uh, oversized tires. In terms of power, mm, decent power. You're never, you never feel like you're uh, at a loss of power, but you never feel like you have an excess amount of power to overtake semis on a two lane road. So it's not underpowered, but I certainly could probably use another 50 horsepower or a re-gear. Although, I'm not sure I'm going to go a re-gear route. I kind of like the 410s. I kind of like how it was all built together at the factory, so I know it's going to hold up. Uh, Jeep built this lift specifically for the 35s, and they also um, built it for the 410s because this was all a package. So I'm going to trust the FCA engineers there. But I'll show you the Pentastar. 285 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque. Ooh, this is going to be hard one-handed. I apologize. Oh, there we go. Wows, are that sturdy. Definitely got to clean that up. But very reliable. Uh, I know if you all out there are fans of uh, a certain YouTube channel who waves his arm and talks into a camera very loudly, uh, that gentleman will tell you that never, never buy a Jeep. They're going to fall apart the second you pull it off the lot. But the 3.6 has been around for close to eight years now in the Wranglers. It's, it's, a, it's a simple engine. The fact of the matter is it's not direct injected. It's not turbocharged. We have not a lot of mileage on this truck, just under 7,000 there, but absolutely no issues to report with the 3.6. It runs, it works, it's a little slow, but who cares? As long as it gets me home off the trail, I'm gonna be a happy camper. Well, anyways, just a quick look at the Jeep Gladiator build. Uh, I'm gonna finish setting up camp and we'll uh, hit the trail tomorrow. Thanks for joining me on this walk around.